Ladies and gentlemen, you know how you spent all this time making this oogalicious design, Exhibit A, for your bubble app? And then on top of that, you spend your energy, time, and attention building out that design over in Bubble, only to realize that your design, your app, is not on par with industry standard apps because Bubble gives you very limited control over how images are displayed and rendered onto the page, loading slower than ideal. Be at ease, friend, because in this video, we are going to cover how to build an image preloader in Bubble so that your app runs blazingly fast for your users. After a thorough investigation of ways to bring images onto the page in Bubble, here we can see static images, database images, with ignoring MGIX, which is the Bubble's automatic processor, option sets, and so on. Um, basically, this video, the, what we're going to go through and present here, is actually a solution from another Bubbler, Mr. Victor Nihao. Hope I'm saying that right. Thank you, sir over from Flusk, check them out, part of the bubble community for the security side of things, um, has presented a really great solution here, which we're going to overview in this video, but we're also going to take it even a step further and stick around at the end. We'll look at actually how to build, not just, so this is just from one data source. We'll look at the right way, really the only way in bubble to build multiple data sources into a list of images into your preloader. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and look at what we'll be building. So in the intro, we saw this flow of screens where we were bouncing around. It's basically a uh, something that collects a user's input to create some AI related um, images for a tool. But on each of these pages, we have a fairly large image, and then we will also have repeating groups full of images. And we're gonna want to look at how we can do that across multiple screens, because in this particular setup, we have um, multiple screens, multiple repeating groups, and multiple uh, single images. But before that, we are going to start out by creating a fresh page and we're just going to walk through an example here where we'll, we're just going to go ahead and build this. Um, so here is the steps because the way that we'll do this is that we'll just look at, we'll actually leave it unfixed there. We'll do two columns, the type of content. I already have some image tester. I'll show you my database setup for this. So it's simply a image tester data type with an image that is an image here. And they are just filled in with a bunch of images. So that's uh, that's what we're going to be preloading here. If we just take a look at that one of these, we can see that it's fairly large in terms of its size. So um, and Bubble also has its own downscale stuff, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. But let's dive into the solution actually first. So the thing we're going to do is we're going to do a search for all of these images. We're just going to get these images into um, what we have here. But to do that, so to show our preloader with just a basic example here, I'm just going to say uh, number. It's just the number of images we'll show to start out with, and we'll set that at two. Next, we will go directly to the solution, which is not an image element, as you might have thought. We're going to be replacing all of our image elements with this HTML, HTML element. And the reason why we'll do that, if you note over here on this screen, on this test up, testing setup, we have this image that, let's look at this URL here. It is the exact same image in terms of like, you know, it's a static image that's, you know, on bubble server. And these, this URL references the same image, except this one includes the instructions not to process with the kind of behind the scenes MGIX processor. Now, if we look at this on the page here, to go ahead and open each of these into a new tab. And then if we inspect the URL, so we can see that this URL is actually different. Here we have this 
Notice this D1MU, which we'll come back to later, but that's basically the server that um, the MJIC stuff gets processed on and it sits there and we'll you know, use a structured URL string to create our solution here in a moment. Um, but you can see that this image is a lot smaller than this image, which we gave the instruction do not process with MJIX. So that's just basically, uh, again, these these two images left, left and right. So the reason we're gonna be using this is because Bubble actually, if we were to take a look at this example, Bubble will display basically, um, okay, to give this a fuller explanation, we're gonna go items until, and then we did this image preloader's number, which is two. So let's actually go and look at this. And to complete that thought, I was about to say Bubble, and then I stopped. But so if we look at the repeating group here, Bubble has these two images here. These two images, if we were to put in a preloader and pull these onto the page, the thing that we're getting here is we're actually getting the full images here. And then uh, if we had an image element here and we were to right click and display that, we can see here that this was the uh, non imjix but what would get displayed in here is the imjix. So the thing that we want to load is basically a already pre-processed with MJIX thing. Uh, rather than we would hit a button, we would load some stuff, or in the example in the intro of this video, we would move from one screen to the next screen. Basically, the, the key principle that's occurring there is the user interacts, new things show up on the screen. And we want that process to be as immediate as possible. That is what we're aiming for in this video. So what allows us to do this, and a pretty ingenious solution from Victor is over on the forum. If you want to go check out that post, this will be a link to in the video description. Um, a pretty ingenious solution is we'll be utilizing these two pieces of code, which I'll also go point out again, uh, you can just grab these from this post or they're also, I'll attempt to make them available in the description. I believe I will fail because of, uh, even if it's, it, I might be able to do it with like a halfway uh, done HTML statement, but the YouTube descriptions don't allow for code uh, to be placed in them. So this, um, what we'll be doing is we'll be taking this first half of this and placing it into our HTML. And then we'll be following this for the, so we want the current cells image testers, images URL formatted as choose URL encoded. So your, your whole statement will read formatted as a URL. And then at the end of that, we'll add the second half of this. And the second half of this is, it includes some instructions for how MJIX will process things which only by brief mention for the parameters there, there is a possibility to utilize, you know, these core string parameters on the end, which will uh, allow you some extra options, for example. So if you're loading really small images, you know, maybe you would actually go with, you know, 32 by 32 or something like that, if they were um, thumbnail type of images or something. But this is basically, this is the solution setup. Okay, so what we see here is that we are loading these uh, images into this repeating group, but we haven't done anything yet with a preloader. All I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go copy and paste on that. And then, so that we're going to rename this one repeating group preloader. And we're going to change its data a little bit. We're going to go, we're going to have it do the same thing, but basically, so the, the principle is this, put into your preloader the only enough next data that you, of what your user will interact with that is reasonable. There's a balance here. If you're like, oh my gosh, I can preload everything. Sweet. I'm going to load in like 157 images and blah, blah, blah. Um, like that's still got to load. Like there's still a time cost on that. So in there's there would actually be a little bit of an art and a science into using preloaders in your app and selecting uh, strategically the spots to put the preloaders prior to users interacting with things where the they would be um, image heavy. But in this case, we're just going to preload four of these images in. We're going to take this 
repeating group. We're going to knock it down to two here. And because basically the, the idea is just that, well, you go one, I suppose, too. Uh, but the idea is that it would just be hidden on the page and not interfere with the design. But okay, so the thing that it's going to do is that it's going to load this, the special version that I was talking about. It's actually going to load these four. So the first one will load these two. And then when those two are you know loaded, these ones will be ready and available when we add the, the button. The button that will... So let me take this and this. Okay, so all I did is just a little bit of formatting there, a little bit of moving things around, and uh, and this button will be down here. But what we haven't done yet is, okay, so when we show more, basically, aka, the principle is the user interacts with something, and the stuff in our preloader is going to show. What I'm going to do for this case is that it is this state and then we'll just add two to its value. So we'll like load two more of the thing. Okay, and then so with that, let's go ahead and preview this. And maybe we, we could, I don't know, yeah, let's, let's format this stuff so it looks a little nicer. And then I'll go ahead and give it a roundness, see what we get there. Okay. So, uh, to go over what is happening on the back end of things is that if we inspect this, we have repeating group image tester. This only has two items in it. The repeating group preloader, this has six items in it. And importantly is that the, the HTML in that has loaded in the, like I said earlier in this video, Pay attention to this D1MU, which we looked at when we were looking at the this big one here. Is that this the images are actually now loaded. Rather than getting rather than getting these images loaded, uh, which are the version of the image that is not processed by MJX, which is the image that shows on the page. Because if you did a preloader without this method, what you would end up keep doing is you would end up preloading some images that when the show more button is clicked, then Google or not Google bubble, one of those popular tools out there, um, bubble would process with MJX and there'd still be that slight delay. And we're aiming for, you know, as fast of a solution as possible. Okay, so let's see this now in action here. So let's go ahead and show me the more, show me the more, show me the more, show me the more. Well, you can see that the preloader, we went so fast actually, like there, and this is actually a great thing to point out. Of course, there's limitations because there is always the amount of time that it takes to preload things. And actually, um, you know, in this case, all at the solution would just be one, two, three, four. So I had preloaded uh, just these first four right out of the gates with these two. But if somebody's, you know, if your users, you're playing on your users to interact at such a rate or velocity uh, throughout the app, just ensure that the loading time, you know, proceeds or is, you know, kind of in line with that, if that makes sense. AKA, you'd want to load more stuff in advance if they're going to go really fast through stuff. So if we had loaded all of them in advance, then we wouldn't have seen that at the end, but we also would have not gotten this great explanation. So uh, that's it. If you want to stay around, I'm going to also show this. Uh, I'm going to show off this other method. So that is that is it for the technical way of how to do this. But when, in this case, we have only loaded in one data source. We have just loaded in from this. But now if you just like our um, intro situation where apps like that are, you know, often uh, show things throughout different screens and often show them, it be one item here, one item there. If we were going to build a data source with multiple items of lists of things, as well as individual items, there's a way to do that. Let's take a look. So in the case of this, let's see what we're dealing with. Now, of course, the images are actually already cached on my machine, so they actually appear to be going quicker. Um, but we can see that we had 
one, two, three, these come from an option set, small images. Uh, this is a image that's just standing static by itself. Then we had a repeating group here. And then here we have another repeating group. So I'm going to show now how to set up basically, let's count our images. Um, I'll set my preloader up here uh, so that when someone is there on this, that anything in the future will be preloaded. So they're on this screen, maybe one image is not as fast as I'd like it, but also just the tip that of course always applies is, you know, do the optimization uh, that you can do with any type of compressor or any type of thing um, for your images using just something simple like imagecompressor.com. But to count up our images, so we have one static, three uh, option sets. These come from option sets as well. So we have one repeating group. This image uh, stays static. So that's, I guess it's just two static images and two repeating groups. So uh, let's go and see how we would do that. The way that it works for building data sources in Bubble, if you're going to add multiple things together, is that in order to get some of the operators that allow you to do things, start with a list. That's thing number one. So thing number one, uh, we already looked, we had two option sets. So we'll get an option and we'll do it for pets and we'll just go all options there. And then we'll go all of the items icons, which those are images. So we have the setup type content here, on my repeating group. Uh, and then I have a blank HTML thing inside of it. So uh, that's list number one. Next up, I'm gonna do merged with and then I'm going to do also do get an option. So this time my option set is the pet activities and I'll just go with all options for those. And then again, I'll choose all each items uh, image. So I've added together two lists by using this merged with operator. So that's kind of key thing. Number one, when you're building these preloaders is start with, start with lists. If you're adding lists together, add all the lists together first, use merge with to add all of those lists. Then when you would like to go and add single items here, we'll do the plus item operator. So we'll add this item and we'll just go here with an arbitrary text. So we can see here on the shell number two, uh, shell number one is the one we'll say that the preloader, you know, once somebody gets there, uh, we potentially do it before. This is just for the sake of this ex example. We just want to pick a spot. So uh, I'll go and I'll grab this static URL and then back in this arbitrary text, I'm going to go HTTPS colon and then just paste that in. So we'll see that get added there. And then let's see a plus item. It would also be, we'll do the same thing for this. So you get to see it twice. Woohoo. Uh, plus item, arbitrary text and that. Okay, so we basically built the, the extra preloader and that's kind of the um, the promise here of this video that it would show you how to do that. And then the final steps to do would simply be adding that HTML stuff in here, sizing the HTML elements, re replacing this uh, image element with an HTML element, and then replacing that with uh, each of these with the, um, you know, you'd wanna pull the images source and what I mean by that is if we revisit this arbitrary text, so right now we're on the uh, the, the actual last image here, and this last image is this. So to get this working with the Imgex preloader, we would simply take it up to here, and then now this would be, we'd actually just enter this in statically for this HTML element here. And uh, and we can see it's kind of already, you know, showing a little bit. So that's that's cool. Um, but that's the only difference. Everything else would be the exactly the same as shown uh, on these repeating groups. Uh, this would be replaced out just like the main example in this video. So if you enjoyed this video and if you made it here this far, I'll also point out one final bonus as we wrap up is that over on the uh, forum post here, if you actually want to go and see this in the bubble editor at the end, you can grab uh, this, see the result here. So you can go and play around with this, inspect the, um, 
the details of this setup and uh, that's it. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more great tips about bubble. And thanks so much for watching.